King's Dominion is an absolute behemoth of an amusement park. Spread across 280 acres, it's home to 48 attractions and 13 roller coasters, with one of our favorite and one of our least favorite coasters in the world. We witnessed stunning views atop a replica of the Eiffel Tower, had our minds obliterated by one of the most aggressive coasters we've ever experienced, and discovered what a theme park is like when it's had multiple different owners and operators over its 48 years of life. King's Dominion is definitely a controversial park, with some people loving it and other people hating it, especially when compared to its sister park, King's Island. So we were incredibly interested in discovering whether it was worth a visit, and what we experienced certainly surprised us. For review time, I'm Luke, and this is our review of King's Dominion. King's Dominion's thrill lineup is massive and insanely well varied, with the park being known for having some of the most intense thrill rides in the world. Being home to Intimidator, uh, I mean Project 305, Twisted Timbers, and of course, Apple Zapple. King's Dominion goes down in review time history as the park with both one of our favorite coasters of all time and one of our least favorites. But more on our least favorite in a second. The standout coaster in the park for us was Twisted Timbers by Rocky Mountain Construction. We were lucky enough to ride several RMC coasters on our USA road trip, but this one surprised us the most. What the coaster lacked in height, it made up for in sheer force. After being whipped down the barrel roll, this ride is relentless and packed with airtime that will have you clinging to the lap bar. Project 305, which was known as Intimidator 305 when we visited, is a relentless machine that pushes the human body to its limits. I'll be honest, we're more themed entertainment people here at Review Time than coaster enthusiasts, but we heard good things about 305, so we were eager to give it a go. As the old roller coaster tycoon saying goes, Project 305 looks too intense for me. And we were right. The cable lift hill gives you little time to regret your decision before pummeling you into the coaster's many twists and turns. Both of us struggled to stay conscious as our vision faded and we started to gray out. It's worth doing once, but I'd happily never go on this ride again. The park also has some absolute classic attractions such as Grizzly, Racer 75, and Woodstock Express for the little ones. Grizzly and Woodstock Express are iterations of the same coaster we once had in Sydney at Wonderland, known as the Bush Beast and the Beastie, which left me flooded with nostalgia. The newest area, Jungle Expedition, is a solid addition to the park and is a strong departure from just plopping down thrill rides and calling it a day. The land introduced a new thrill ride called Tumbilly, the first and potentially only SNS40 free spin coaster we will ever go on. This thing truly felt like being thrashed around inside a washing machine and not in a good way. If you love intense coasters, you will probably absolutely adore this ride. But for us, we will never forgive Alicia Stella for the pain that was introduced to us after her safety voiceover. Elsewhere in the park were some other coasters that stuck with us for various reasons, including Flight of Fear, which is a classic Paramount era coaster that combined light theming with a powerful LIM launch that creates a very effective indoor coaster experience, as well as Dominator, which sets the scene for the park as a whole, greeting you from the car park and giving you a glimpse at the thrills to come. If you're a seeker of thrills, King's Dominion won't disappoint. And if you're a seeker of high quality theme park content, hopefully we don't disappoint either. And we would love it if you could give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. We're trying to finally hit 100,000 subscribers this year. King's Dominion gets a nine out of 10 for thrill rides. King's Dominion has a surprisingly thorough family attraction lineup. Now this is no Disneyland. The park doesn't contain any high quality dark rides, but is instead bolstered by the sheer volume of attractions that everybody can enjoy. As always, several rides toe the line between family and thrills. Anaconda, 
reptilian and the water attractions, or provide that extra punch to test the limits of Sunny Jim and Grandpa. Boo Blasters on Boo Hill is an attraction by Sally Corporation featured across several Cedar Fair parks, including Canada's Wonderland, Carrow Winds, King's Island, and of course, King's Dominion. The attraction is clearly still heavily inspired by Scooby-Doo, because it used to be themed to that property before losing the rights. Despite this, it's a fun attraction worth experiencing with the family to try and compete for the most points. Just be warned, being the only dark ride in the park, this thing can get some insane weights, and was our second longest wait of the day. Our longest wait was for the Backlot Stunt Coaster, which was a super fun experience, but you can tell the best days are behind it. None of the effects worked, and it felt like careening around an abandoned shipping yard more than being a Hollywood stunt driver. This is a regional theme park in the United States, so you can expect the classic mix of attractions from a rock and tug to a whip to bumper cars and more, most of which are contained within the Planet Snoopy family area. We didn't ride a single attraction in this area due to us clearly not being the target demographics, but the land was packed with families, all looking like they were having an incredible time. There's a reason these attractions are all theme park staples. King's Dominion gets an 8 out of 10 for family rides. King's Dominion is an interesting case when it comes to experiences, because technically, it doesn't have many. But what it does have are fairly substantial. An example of this is Soak City, a water park connected to King's Dominion that is included completely free with admission. We visited the park during one of their limited time events known as Carnival, and the atmosphere was spectacular. The additional food and beverages alongside the parade and entertainment made for a great end to the day. One of the best and most unique experiences on offer greets you right as you enter the park. At the end of International Street is a one-third scale replica of the Eiffel Tower, a replica that serves as one of the best theme park observation towers in the world. After making your way 85 meters up the tower in a sketchy feeling elevator, you glimpse the beautiful view on offer. Looking out over each side gives you another unique look at the park below. The Eiffel Tower is a perfect place to start your day, letting you look out, see everything on offer, and decide on your must-ride attractions. We give King's Dominion a 7 out of 10 for experiences. We got to experience some excellent entertainment when we were at King's Dominion, but it should be noted that this isn't always the case, and entertainment seems to fluctuate dramatically between seasons. What we can vouch for is that the quality of what was provided was superb. The live entertainment added a level of atmosphere that elevated spirits and amplified a collective feeling of elation in the park. For the opening season of the new Jungle Expedition Land, the park introduced a show called Let's Get Wild, a musical jungle adventure. Packed with live music, creative puppets, and some great acrobatics, this show was a surprising delight and seemed to be incredibly popular with a wide audience. Being there during Carnival, the end of the day was capped off with an exciting parade rolling throughout the park and several entertainment options on a large stage underneath the Eiffel Tower. These created a great atmosphere once the sun set and became a perfect end to our day. Walking around the park, we did notice two large spaces called the Action Theatre and the appropriately named King's Dominion Theatre, but none of them had any shows on during our visit. We give King's Dominion a 5 out of 10 for entertainment. Wait times were strange and the flow of guests around the park was unpredictable. Sometimes one ride would be a 90 minute wait and then next time you walked past it was 5. This led to a lot of walking around the park to find the queues that we were willing to wait in. Despite this, pretty much all rides that could were running multiple trains, and we were able to easily get on everything we wanted in our single day at the park, even riding twisted timbers around five times. It was uncommon to come across any attractions that weren't operating or that were having significant downtime, but for some reason, 
As we mentioned earlier, Backlot Stunt Coaster maintained the most consistently long line throughout the day. A huge shout out has to be given to the staff who were truly on it. Not only were they attentive and effective, but they managed to keep things lively and really helped to add atmosphere to the park. Everyone seemed to be enjoying themselves, and that kind of energy from the staff was infectious for guests. King's Dominion gets an 8 out of 10 for operations. This park has changed ownership several times throughout its history, and the theming reflects that. There are clear divides between when the park was operated by Taft, then Paramount, and lastly Cedar Fair. This leaves a walk through the park feeling a bit like wandering through a timeline. Your introduction is International Street, and this sets the scene with a combination of gorgeous scenery, playful architecture, and impressive design. After this, for the most part, King's Dominion embraces Americana, with simple architecture and greenery to reinforce its settings effectively, with a few exceptions. Under Paramount's ownership, King's Dominion introduced a few themed roller coasters into the mist. Originally, these were themed around Outer Limits and the Italian Job, but continue to operate to this day under the names Flight of Fear and Backlot Stunt Coaster. We're big fans of themed coasters, but these additions stand out as particularly odd in the park's lineup today because there is nothing else quite like them. Cedar Fair, the latest operator of the theme park, has shown clear intent to shake things up even further with the park's latest land known as Jungle Expedition, set around the deep dark jungle. This addition makes a vague homage to Africa with a focus on exploration. And the voiceover for the two attractions here is done by Theme Park Stop's very own Alicia Stella. I think it's the right call for King's Dominion to start refreshing its lands in this way to give it a stronger sense of identity instead of feeling like multiple different projects merged into one. Overall, we give the park a 6 out of 10 for theming. We were genuinely shocked at how many park-specific items were available in the shop for a wide variety of attractions. It's great to see a park taking pride in their rides this way, because boy do we love attraction and park-specific merchandise. Shirts weren't just limited to tees, but also high-quality polos featuring the ride logos. The additions such as Twisted Timbers and the new rides such as Tumbilly had the most merchandise available, but even older coasters like Dominator still felt the love with multiple items available. They also sold our favorite Coaster Dynamics models and both of us couldn't help but walk away with one for our favorite ride in the park, Twisted Timbers. King's Dominion gets a 9 out of 10 for merchandise. King's Dominion is insanely cheap. Currently, online single-day tickets are just $39.99. And the park frequently offers special deals such as the Fun Day Bundle, which included admission, parking, and all-day dining, for $64.99, which is insanely good value for a day out at a theme park. Outside of single-day offerings, there are also currently three season passes on offer. The starter, Silver Pass, is $99 and includes unlimited entry. Next is the Gold Pass, which at $115 gets you unlimited entry and includes access to limited time events. And the final season pass is a whopping $250 and is known as the Prestige Pass. This pass includes additions such as free preferred parking, one single-use fast lane per visit, and two free bring a friend tickets annually, all for less than a couple of days at Disney. If you've only got limited time or want to just drop in for dinner, the park also offers an after 4 p.m. ticket, which is a little bit cheaper than a day pass. On top of this, all tickets include access into Soak City, King's Dominion Water Park, completely included. Obviously, all of this can and will change over time, so be sure to check out the best ticket option for your visit. Cedar Fair usually provides fairly decent food, beverages, and merchandise at an okay cost for a theme park, and King's Dominion did not disappoint in this regard. We will be honest that we can't remember exactly what we purchased for food, but the fact it wasn't offensively bad like what's on offer at SeaWorld Parks makes us believe it wasn't terrible. 
Considering the sheer number of attractions compared to the cheap price, the included water park and affordable annual passes with limited restrictions, we give this park a 9 out of 10 for affordability. King's Dominion sets the scene from the moment you enter through the park gates. You are immediately thrust into the lush and vibrant International Street, dwarfed by an intimidating skyline of attractions such as the Eiffel Tower in front of you and Dominator to your left. From here on out, you know you're going to be experiencing huge attractions in a beautiful environment. Spread over 280 acres, King's Dominion is big, really big. There are times where it feels like you're some of the only people in the park, which can be a little jarring when you get to a coaster and see that it has a one hour queue. Likewise, this layout can be pretty confusing. King's Dominion doesn't follow any of the traditional park layouts and feels more like they threw spaghetti at the wall and took that as an inspiration. This leads to the park having a sense of ebb and flow. At times, it's just you and nature, where it feels like you've been transported to a completely different place and are hiking through the wilderness with attractions from a bygone era. And at other times, it feels like you've just been thrust smack bang into the middle of an urban Six Flags devoid of life with merely unfeeling concrete and steel in your view. Without these spread out wilderness sections, I genuinely believe that King's Dominion would be a far worse park. But these charming, isolated moments are a much needed break within what is predominantly a thrill park. And whilst I can imagine some people dread these long sections of walking, the alternative would be just more concrete and cues. The downside of this though is that you will come across many dead ends that don't feel like they should be dead ends, which can be frustrating. As mentioned, we visited during Carnival, which further contributed to a laid back party vibe as the day went on. There was live music, a parade and limited decorations that really bolstered the good times. Overall, we give the park an 8 out of 10 for atmosphere. Being owned and operated by Cedar Fair, King's Dominion is largely a full-service theme park, providing many of the amenities you've come to expect. In terms of physical accessibility, the park is relatively large, though it is quite flat, making it reasonably easy to traverse. King's Dominion also allows you to bring your own wheelchairs and ECVs, whilst also providing hired options at the park. They also provide accommodations for hidden and neurological disabilities, but they recommend contacting them in advance to figure out the best options for you or your party. Being a modern theme park, they of course offer a paid fast track option, which varies from $60 to $85 a day. This is quite cheap compared to most parks, but when we visited in the middle of summer, it wasn't that busy, so it may not be required at all. We noticed that when visiting, posted wait times were often incredibly varied and couldn't always be relied on to be accurate. I imagine this is partly due to the park's odd layout, causing an unpredictable distribution of guests. We would usually trust a quick look at the queue length over whatever the posted wait time was. This season will be an interesting one, as it's the first time the park has operated since the Six Flags and Cedar Fair merger. Cedar Point has sparked some controversy recently amongst both fans and visitors with policy and accessibility changes surrounding Top Thrill 2. And it'll be interesting to see whether these problems extend to the other Cedar Fair parks. Likewise, King's Dominion introduced a chaperone policy beginning with their 2023 season. Under this policy, all guests aged 15 or younger must be accompanied by a chaperone who is at least 21 years old in order to be admitted to or remain in the park. Cedar Fair had already implemented this at Knott's Berry Farm to success after several incidents in the park, so it makes sense for them to introduce similar policies around their other parks. We didn't notice any problems with kids or teenagers when we were there, but then again we were only there for one day. King's Dominion scores a 7 out of 10 for services. Walking into King's Dominion, we had very little expectations. We knew almost nothing about the park, but by the time we walked out, the park had two brand new fans. 
While Project 305 and Tumbilly, we would be happy to never ride again for the rest of our lives, we could ride Twisted Timbers over and over and over again. While this park isn't anything groundbreaking in the grand scheme of things, we wish we had parks like this closer to home here in Australia. But over to you. Have you ever been to King's Dominion? And if so, what did you think? Let us know in the comments down below. And if you want to truly support what we do here, consider checking out our Patreon for exclusive content you won't find anywhere else. The link is in the description. For review time, I'm Luke. Thanks for watching.